You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Experts call out Pakistan for sponsoring terrorism at India's Raisana Dialogue. Pakistan Army kills Indian civilians to infiltrate terrorists through LOC. Deadly blast rocks Quetta. And Hafiz Saeed pleads not guilty in terror financing case. India hosted a three-day annual Raisana Dialogue this week, where representatives from different countries discussed the issue of terrorism on the third day of the event. The panel condemned terror-sponsoring countries as representative from India's side. General Bipin Rawat, Chief of Indian Defence Staff, asserted that it is the time to bring an end to terrorism and a complete washout of terror entities is only possible if states that are going to sponsor terrorism stop using terrorists as proxy for warfare. Have a look. Pakistan-sponsored terrorism poses a major threat to world peace. Experts from across the world gathered at India's Raisana Dialogue event to discuss security threats in South Asia due to state-sponsored terrorism. Gareth Bailey, Special Representative on Afghanistan, Pakistan, and United Kingdom acknowledged India's hefty loss because of number of terror attacks in the region, while also asserting that United Kingdom recognizes these losses and stands empathetically with India in fighting terrorism. By the last count in 2018, some 340 Indians lost their lives to terrorists, and that is unconscionable. And the UK knows the suffering. Uh, that uh, a nation can bear when it loses uh, its people to, to terrorist action. So I just want to, to record that and to record our sympathy and empathy with India today. Bailey, while speaking on challenges to security in South Asia, emphasized on the fact that terrorist groups are functioning from Pakistan's territory and thus expressed concerns over regional stability of South Asia. It is absolutely clear that terrorist groups are operating from within Pakistan. They pose a serious challenge to the government of Pakistan and to South Asia's regional stability. He further said that there is a need to combat terrorism in all possible ways to fight proxy groups, terrorism and extremism. If you're the UK as you engage and you engage hard, you engage at every level, from the bottom to the very top. You engage regularly and you set out in terms the importance of action against uh, proxy groups and against uh, uh, terrorism and against extremism. Chief of Defence Staff of India, General Bipin Rawat, also attended the event where he pitched for strong global action against state sponsoring terrorism, saying there is a need to address terrorism from its roots. So this war is not ending. The war on terror is something which is going to continue. We'll have to live with it until we understand and get to the roots of terror. While calling out for a diplomatic isolation of those sponsoring terrorism, General Rawat said that the world has to accept that there is a state that sponsored terrorism, providing shield to sponsor of terrorists by denying their role in terrorism cannot continue forever, he added. Denial of terrorism to say that they are not denying it, they are themselves victim of terrorism, cannot continue for on and on. And I think we have to get the bull by these horns and take them to task. He said the countries which are sponsoring terrorism could not be part of global fight against terror networks. We have to bring an end to terrorism and that can only happen. The way the Americans started after 9-11, they said let's go on a spree on global war on terror and let the nations join together and fight terrorism together. Well, to do that, what do you have to do? You have to isolate the terrorists. 
anybody who's sponsoring terrorism has to be taken to task. You cannot have partners who are partnering with you in the global war on terror and yet sponsoring proxies and terror. Further launching a scathing attack on Pakistan, Indian Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat said that terrorism will not end till the time there are countries which provide funding to it. Terrorism is here to stay. So long as there are going to be states that are going to be sponsoring terrorism, so long there are going to be states that are going to use terrorists as their proxies, make weapons available to them, make the funding for them, we cannot control terrorism. The panel also addressed the violence in Afghanistan and called out Pakistan for sponsoring Taliban. Saad Mohisin, an expert on counter-terrorism, said that Pakistan is deliberately sponsoring terrorism and supporting Taliban that has resulted in more than 8,000 international casualties in Afghanistan. He further said that strong action will have to be taken against Pakistan's sponsored terrorism. If they can target Qasem Soleimani, why can't they target a general that lives in Rawalpindi? Um, the, the, the ISI has been, and again in this book, in this chapter, this senior US official confirms uh, that, that how active they were in terms of their support of the Taliban. It, listen, you, you cannot have a peace deal until the sanctuaries exist in those countries. And what the weapons and training and, and everything else and the funding they receive from uh, Pakistan, it's contributed to, to 8,000 deaths, uh, international um, casualties in Afghanistan. It's not something that uh, you, can, you can ignore. Voicing their concerns with India, the international community has been repeatedly asking Pakistan to take action against state-sponsored terrorism. However, despite several warnings of getting blacklisted by FATF and diplomatic pressure from the international community, Pakistan continued to harbour terrorist outfits on its soil. Pakistan has run amok ever since Indian administration abrogated Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, enabling the Indian state to receive direct benefits from the centre. It has intensified its efforts at increasing the strength of terrorists along the line of control. It is trying hard to infiltrate terrorists through constant attacks and ceasefire violations in Kashmir. However, all its attempts have been foiled by Indian security forces. Recently, Indian security forces successfully busted a terror module and gunned down three terrorists during an encounter, a report. While the new year has brought new beginnings for the entire world, Pakistan is still stuck on its path of violence. Islamabad's intent to continue attack across the Indo-Pak borders has grown even stronger. In yet another ceasefire violation, the Pakistan army resorted to firing and mortar shelling on the forward posts and village of Jammu and Kashmir along the line of control. Villages living in border area of Jammu and Kashmir are forced to live in constant fear because of Pakistan army's repeated firing at the borders. काफी डर का माहौल रहता है और कई लोगों ने तो खाना तक नहीं खाया जबकि ये फायरिंग चली है खाने खाने का टाइम था तो अभी और बच्चों में डर और खोफ का माहौल है इस वक्त और डर है इतना हम बता नहीं सकते आपको The Indian Army strongly retaliated against these ceasefire violations, resulting in heavy exchange of fire. Baffled by India's counter-terrorism attack, Pakistan Army killed two unarmed army porters, Muhammad Aslam and Altaf Hussain, and injured three others in mortar shelling in Gulpur sector on 10th January. The body of Aslam was badly mutilated and his head was missing. These constant attacks on Kashmiri civilians reek of Pakistan's hypocrisy in staking claim over Kashmir and showing solidarity with Kashmiris. I am a porter of the army. What is that? There was a fire on the motor. We were five people in Pakistan. So, we were going to work with five people. There was a fire on our beach. We were going to go to the army. We were going to go to the army. Now, there are three people. There were two deaths. 
तो तीन आदमी बच गए हम जख्मी द इन्फिल्ट्रेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तानी टेररिस्ट हैज बीन अ मेजर कंसर्न फॉर ऑल द नेबरिंग कंट्रीज ऑफ पाकिस्तान स्पेशली इंडिया हवेवर इंडियन आर्मी इज इफेक्टिवली थॉटिंग दीज विशियस अटैम्प्ट इन अ मेजर सेट बैक टू इस्लामाबाद थ्री टेररिस्ट वर गन डाउन इन अ काउंटर टेररिज्म ऑपरेशन इन इंडियाज नॉर्दर्न जम्मू एंड कश्मीर टेरिटरी ऑन ट्वेल्थ जनवरी सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज रिसीव इन्फॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द टेररिस्ट इन थ्रॉल एरिया ऑफ द कश्मीर वैली फॉलोइंग विच दे लॉन्च अ सर्च ऑपरेशन एंड गन दैम डाउन ड्यूरिंग एनकाउंटर जब हमारे पार्टी ने जिसमें कि पुलिस आर्मी और सीआरपीएफ शामिल थी उसको कॉर्डन डाल डाला और उसको सरेंडर करने के लिए कहा तो उधर से फायर आया फिर फायरिंग इधर से टेलेट किया गया जिसमें दो मिलिटेंट मारे गए उसका तीसरा मिलिटेंट घर शिफ्ट कर लिया उसके बाद फिर दोनों तरफ से फायरिंग हुई उस फायरिंग में तीसरा मिलिटेंट मारा गया है अभी तीनों मिलिटेंट को त्राल थाना लाया जा रहा है जो लीगल कार्रवाई है मेडिकल कार्रवाई पोस्टमार्टम किया जाएगा इंडिया एट वेरियस ओकेजन हैज मेड इट स्टैंड क्लियर दैट इंडिया वुड कंटिन्यू विद इट्स पॉलिसी ऑफ जीरो टॉलरेंस अगेंस्ट टेररिज्म एंड इट्स आइडियोलॉजी इज टू इंश्योर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ बॉर्डर्स एंड मेक द कंट्री फ्री ऑफ टेररिज्म रिट्रेटिंग द सेम इंडियाज आर्मी चीफ जनरल मनोज नारवनी सैद दैट इंडिया हैज जीरो टॉलरेंस अगेंस्ट टेररिज्म दे आर आर मेनी ऑप्शन टू गिव अ रिप्लाई टू टेररिस्ट एंड इट विल नॉट हेजिटेट to use them atank ke prati hamara policy zero tolerance ka hai atank vaad ko badhava dene wale desh ke khilaf halkan karne walon ko jawab dene ke liye hamare paas anek vikalp hain jinka istemal karne mein hum nahi jitke chahenge scrapping of the temporary special status of jammu and kashmir has badly rattled pakistan which is desperately carrying out ceasefire violations to infiltrate terrorist through jammu and kashmir in order to create unrest in the valley despite its internal instability failing economy and international isolation pakistan does not compromise when it comes to funding terrorists however vigilant indian forces have thwarted almost all of its attempts to create havoc and incite violence in the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir Balochistan's capital Quetta once again suffered through a major setback this week when a mosque in the capital city was hit by a deadly bomb blast during Friday prayers in the evening The terror attack in the mosque comes just few days after a motorcycle bomb blast in the Liaquat market of Quetta. The repeated terror strikes in the mineral rich province expose Islamabad's strategic use of terrorism through military and ISI to unleash barbarity on innocent Shiite Muslims of Balochistan and suppress the voices of Baloch nationalists. A blast at a mosque in Quetta in southwestern Pakistan on January 10th killed at least 16 people including a senior police officer and wounded 20 others according to police an improvised explosive device had been planted at the mosque inside a seminary in quetta city the capital of balochistan province the injured and the deceased were shifted to quetta civil hospital while an emergency was imposed in all hospitals of the city The mosque is located in a densely populated Pashtun majority neighborhood. Yahan satellite town Isakabad masjid mein dhamaka hua jis mein 16 afraad apni zindagi haar gaye apni zindagi ki baazi haar gaye jabke 40 ke kareeb zakhmi hain jo shaheed hue hain unki halat bahut hi kharab hai aur zakhmiyon mein bhi aksar jo hai wo shadeed mutasir hain. Civilians of Quetta have been facing relentless atrocities at the hands of Pakistan army and the terrorist groups supported by them. 
The endless bloodshed and gross human rights violations in Balochistan are leading to complete loss of morale of minority Shiite community in the province. The people have no trust over the provincial government that claims to be taking care of concerns of the Baloch people, but functions at the commands of the central government in Islamabad, whose only wish is to crush the spirit and voices of Baloch community. <laughs> Terrorists have been targeting Quetta and other places in Baluchistan from past several decades. They have been doing so at the commands and wishes of Pakistan military and ISI that facilitate Tehrik e Taliban Pakistan and Islamic State terror groups to operate in the region. Pakistani security forces have been unleashing repressive and bloody inhuman operations over Baloch civilians who are seeking independence for the ethnic Baloch areas of the province. Baloch nationalists are frequently targeted by Pakistani security forces across the province. They have been struggling for an independent state since 1948 and are consistently muzzled or shot down at their slightest protest against the administration. The recurring terror attacks in the mineral-rich province expose Pakistan military and its notorious inter-services intelligence agencies' deadly plans for the region. जो उठाए जाते हैं तो उनकी मसक्षुदा लाशें वहाँ पर मिलती हैं और कुछ लोग अजारों के साथ से अभी तक लोग बलुचिस्तान पे गायब हैं उनकी फैमिलीज को ये पता नहीं है कि हमारे जो लोग हैं हमारे जो प्यारे हैं वो कहाँ पर हैं और किस आल में हैं तो इस सिचुएशन पे मैं यही कहूँगा कि बलुचिस्तान की आलत खराब से खराब Quetta is the capital of Baluchistan province, Pakistan's largest but most sparsely populated province. It is rich in mineral resources and the root of much of the $60 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project goes through this region. Issues like terrorism, religious fanaticism, sectarian violence, corruption and the threat of nuclear proliferation overwhelm the suffering of the Baloch. While Pakistan and China make huge profits in Balochistan, the local people suffer extreme hardship. Despite its mineral wealth, Balochistan is the poorest region of Pakistan. Ahead of a crucial Financial Action Task Force meeting in February this year, Pakistan seems to be badly failing in persecuting for terror funding. The Jamaat Dawa and lashkar e toiba chief Hafiz Saeed has pleaded not guilty in two terror financing cases against him. Saeed had previously also pleaded not guilty in other cases of terror financing, a report. Mumbai attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed pleaded not guilty in two terror financing cases against him as the Jamaat Dawa or JUD chief recorded his statement in a Pakistani anti-terrorism court amidst mounting international pressure on Islamabad to rein in terrorist groups. The Pakistan Counter-Terrorism Department had registered 23 FIRs against Saeed and his accomplices on the charges of terror financing in different cities of Punjab province leading to his arrest on July 17, 2019. Saeed-led JUD is the front organization for the lashkar e taiba which is responsible for carrying out the 2008 Mumbai attack that killed 166 people, including six Americans. 
The cases of terror financing have been registered against Saeed in Lahore and Gurjawala cities in Punjab province on the applications of the Counter-Terrorism Department of Punjab Police. Hafiz Saeed is an international terrorist um, and uh, uh, is openly roaming around in Pakistan. Now at the moment, you know, he may be in house arrest, but, uh, but uh, all sorts of facilities are being provided to him. He's being guarded by the Pakistani army and his organization is funded by the Pakistani um, government and uh, uh, his people are being trained by ISI and he is involved in not only terror funding as well as promoting extremism in the region. Under pressure from the international community, the Pakistani authorities launched investigations into matters of the lashkar e taiba jamaat dawa and its charity wing, Falai Insaniyat Foundation, or FIF, for their holding and use of trusts to raise funds for terrorism financing. At least 56 seminaries and facilities being run by the JUD and FIF in southern Sindh province were also taken over by authorities in the same case. Consequently, Hafiz Said, the co-founder and chief of these terrorist groups, was arrested in connection with charges related to terror financing and has been detained at Koth Lakhpat jail since then. In spite of these so-called measures by Pakistan's counter-terrorism department, there seems to be absolutely no curb being put on terror financing and terror activities taking place in the country. Pakistan, you know, the, when the government itself is involved in promoting terror, so one should not expect that Pakistani government or its agencies uh, are involved in curbing the, uh, the, the militancy. In fact, uh, some measures they have taken, they are just an eyewash. These measures were taken just to show uh, financial action task force as if they are working, you know. Uh, they are trying to cut militancy or they are, because they want a, uh, they, Pakistan has been put on the grey list of the financial action task force and its meeting is going to take place sometime in next week. So therefore they have taken some measures, you know. These measures, I believe, are just an eye -wash. In October 2019, the Global Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force or FATF retained Pakistan on its grey list till February 2020 for its failure to take adequate action against money laundering and terror financing. Besides, the Asia-Pacific group of FATF has already blacklisted Pakistan for unsatisfactory measures to curb terrorism operating on its soil. As long as Pakistan doesn't take significant steps to fight terrorism and proves that it is genuinely severing ties with Islamist militants, there are high chances of it getting blacklisted by the global body in successive meetings of the Global Terror Financing Watchdog, FATF. If blacklisted, then Pakistan would most certainly face major financial crisis as the International Monetary Funding, or IMF, recently informed that blacklisting of Pakistan by the FATF could have serious implications for capital inflows to the country. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.